people love horror movies like they like horror books because you can go into the theater, you can sit in your seat, it's nice and comfortable, and then you can get the shit scared out of you. You can scream all you want, that's encouraged, and you can be afraid, you can cover your eyes, and when it's over, the curtains close, you poke your buddy in the arm, you have a laugh, you go to the coffee shop, and you can relive it again, and it's all safe. Going to a horror movie involves a sensation that quite reasonably a lot of people don't enjoy, which is being scared. You know, a lot of people don't like being scared. Some of us do. I think for me, um, what I like is the uh, idea of confronting something that in my real life, in real life, I'd rather not deal with, you know? Um, when I was a kid, um, the most horrible job you could be asked to do in this particular house that we lived in was to go downstairs and get ice cream out of the freezer in the basement after dinner, right? And the stairs, were, as there were a lot of basement stairs, were like open. And so every time I went down there, I would imagine something reaching out for me and pulling me in behind those stairs. And so for me, the horror movie allows me to vicariously peek behind those stairs without actually having to go down and get the ice cream. Horror movies are classic escapism filmmaking, and people can just go see them and have this kind of roller coaster ride. It really is. Uh, you know, entertainment with a capital E. When I was very young, there wasn't any video. Pre-1980s, uh, no video. So I would just go down to the uh, to the local theater and look at the marquee posters, the horror posters, and think, wow, what, what kind of delights are inside? The idea of going to a horror film um, as an entertainment is also a way to just escape the kind of mundane, right? You know, I have to take the streetcar every day to work. I have to, you know, um, have lunch at precisely noon every day. I've got a very structured kind of life. So when I go to a movie theater and I see things that are slightly out of control and slightly crazy, it kind of, you know, it's a catharsis for me. It shows me that there's other stuff out there. And I think it, it, is, a, it, it's, it is sheer escapism, and it's escapism of, of of a really fun kind of interesting way because you know while it is fun and it is scary but I also do think that it, it feeds your I don't want to say soul because that is so cheesy but it it does it does fuel your your psyche in some way the release people get when they're afraid and they scream it's very similar to the release you get when you're happy and laughing so it's good once in a while to just scream ah! <laughs> and you feel good after. So you go to the theater, you get your scare, you feel good after and you go home and everyone's happy. I enjoy horror because it's all about provoking. It's all about making a connection with people in terms of what they're familiar with, what they identify with, and then just going Now what are you gonna do? I think if Canadians don't know that we've made a lot of horror films here in Canada, that they just haven't been paying attention. You know, the first Canadian film to get distribution outside of the U uh, outside of Canada and into the U.S. picked up by a major distributor was a horror film called The Mask. You know, you've got the Cronenberg films, which kind of established him um, as a as a really sort of important force. You've got Black Christmas, which kind of um, you know spawned a whole generation of kind of slasher films, um, and films like Prom Night and My Bloody Valentine are kind of like the dirty little secrets of, of Canadian film. What defines Canadian horror, I think, is uh, it's kind of like a brainy sensibility. Sort of the idea of looking at, at, at a horror movie, even if it's an exploitation, splatter movie, anything like that, as something other than or more than simply what's on the surface. I think that we've made um, really good use of character in Canadian horror films, which is something that kind of separates us from the Americans. I think an American films you've you have a lot of kind of generic characters you've got you know the the uh, young bimbos who you know are going to die very early on in the film if they have sex they're going to die if they don't then they're going to live you know and you, you've got the the big hunky guys who are in, invariably having sex with the young bimbos and they're going to die too you know so we we don't generally 
have that really stereotypical kind of stuff in our in our horror films. We have actual characters. I think as Canadians, we we walk around a lot with the fear that there's something inside of us that's going to uh, erupt somehow. It's so much about two layers of horror. It's not just about the gore and how many bodies are going to be around at the end of the day. In fact, it's often only about one particular corpse that you're either trying to avoid or escape, you know, and they're all up here, which to me is intrins intrinsically a Canadian storytelling tradition. Our idea of what a good story is often involves some pretty horrific themes like identity and, and finding yourself and survival and bleak, hostile environments. You know, we just, we kind of get it because we spend all winter here over and over again. So we, we, it's an, a, a state of discomfort is something I think Canadians are all quite familiar with. A lot of people, even if they're fans of the horror genre, say there are Canadian horror movies. And the, the fact is that, yes, there are some of the greatest made and some of that, you know, cut the way and, and led the way for the ones that followed were made in Canada. I did a book called Canadian Horror on Film and Television because I love the genre and I think that there's a lot of great material there that people just aren't aware of. Tom Savini did his first makeup and special effects work on a Canadian film deranged. Oliver Stone's first feature was shot in Montreal called Seizure. You know, Black Christmas, made in Canada. Ginger Snaps, made in Canada. Made in my hometown of Brampton, Ontario. And I'm thinking, all oh, right, that is way cool. A lot of people didn't even know that. So I wanted to put a book together that paid homage and, you know, spread the word. The legend states that in the wrong hands, this mask can do a great deal of harm. It can put the wearer in a hypnotic trance. It can make him do cruel and unnatural things. The mask is, is one of the most important uh, Canadian horror films uh, that were, was ever made, uh, primarily because uh, it was the, the very first um, made in uh, 1961 uh, by a director named Julian Rothman. This was the film that, that really broke through and uh, eventually led really to a Canadian uh, film culture. It was uh, shot in 3D, which was um, kind of strange for the time because it was about the, the 3D trend had died about eight years before he tried to do this. Um, it was also important because they were trying to create a film to do well in American markets and to be bought by a major distributor. The mask is uh, it's about a doctor who receives in the mail one day a ancient Indian rit ritual mask and when he puts it on he enters this strange kind of dream world um, and as he keeps putting it on throughout the film he gets more insane each time and uh, eventually he's, he's driven to at least try to kill his uh, secretary. But what was very interesting about the film is that the 3D sequences uh, happened each time that he put the mask on. Um, so each time the character would put the mask on on screen, a voice would ominously say, put the mask on now, put the mask on now. Put 